In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an end-to-end -end connected product based on Mongoose OS, ESP8266 and AWS serverless architecture. Navigate to mongoose-os.com and scroll down to the list of AWS reference projects and click on See Full Tutorial. This is a smart heater and it is real running in our office. It represents a typical IoT application. An ESP8266 device has a temperature sensor attached to it. It measures temperature and reports it to the cloud. Here we see the temperature graph. Also, it has a relay attached and using that we can turn the device on and off. For example, here I'm doing that. So now the heater is on and I can turn it off. You can even hear a clicking sound when I do that. So using this example as a reference, you can implement a wide range of connected products yourself. Click back on the tutorial and let's see how it works. So we have a device with relay and sensor attached to it. A device has a so-called thing shadow, which is used to store the device state and operate the device. The data is stored in DynamoDB and the front end shows the temperature graph and also a front end talks to the AWS IoT directly when the user wants to control the device through the device shadow and users are authenticated using AWS Cognito. So what we are going to need? First, the hardware. So I have an ESP8266 node MCU, Google and Facebook accounts to set up authentication, Amazon AWS account, and Amazon AWS management utility. Okay, scroll down to the build instructions. Start your terminal. And follow the instructions one by one. First clone Mongoose OS GitHub repository. And go to AWS IoT Smart Heater directory. Now flash the default ESP8266 firmware to the Node MCU board. It's flashed and let's fetch the generated device ID. Let's see what it is. Okay, it's ESP8266 underscore 067082. Copy init.js file to the device. Done. Now enable AWS shadow functionality. Set up Wi-Fi, MOS Wi-Fi network name, and the password. Now provision the device to AWS IoT. This is going to create a thing associated with the device and a device shadow. Okay, the device is ready. Now let's switch to the cloud part. First install helpers and create a separate S3 bucket to keep the helper functions. Okay. And now let's see what's our AWS IoT endpoint. Echo AWS IoT. This is it and create the package template. Now we need to create our auth client IDs for Google and Facebook logins. I'll create Google client ID. Go to Google API console, click on credentials and choose all auth client ID. Select web application, choose some name. For example, my heater, click create. So we have a client ID and secret generated. And let's keep this screen open. Copy the client ID and store it in, in, in the variable. Now let's choose the stack name for the cloud formation stack. Let's say it's heater123 and create the cloud formation stack. So if we open cloud formation console, here it is. And now let's wait until it's created. We can run a separate terminal to see what the device is doing. 
type MOS console in it, we're going to see device logs in this console. What we see in the logs is that the device is reporting its state. The on and off status means it's on or off. In this case, it's off. And the temperature, so we don't have any temperature sensor connected. That's why it's reporting minus 1000 degrees Celsius. Let's see if this tech creation is complete. It is complete now. And, and we can continue with the instructions. Run the describe stacks command to see generated parameters. We are interested in the bucket name and the app URL. Let's see in the output where is the bucket name. Here it is. So type S3 bucket name equals this and the app URL as well. Now copy the front end files to the S3 bucket. index.html and index.js. Also, we need two JavaScript libraries for Cognito. Download them with curl and copy to S3. Okay, that's done. And now navigate to the app URL, which is here. So let's open a new browser tab and press enter. So this is our front end for the smart heater. What we see here that it reports the current temperature, which is minus 1000 degrees. Uh, you can connect a real thing, any sensor you want, and it's going to report that readings. Uh, the time, which is the last time the value has been reported, and the device ID. Let me try to turn it on. And it says it's forbidden because we need to login. We need to navigate to Cognito console and manage federated entities to allow my Google account to operate this smart heater. Click on AWS Cognito console, click on manage federated entities and click on identity pool 4 and then the device ID and again our device ID is ends with 82. This is it. And click on Edit Identity Pool. Find Authentication Providers. Click on Google Plus. And change default role. Now I'm entering my email. Equals to info at sesanta.com. And I'm selecting a role, heater123, my heater admin role. And click Save Changes. After that, copy the application URL. Go back to the Google Credentials window and select My Heater. And enter the authorized JavaScript origin, our application URL. Click Save. Okay, go back to the front end and let me now sign in with Google. Click on sign in with Google. I choose myself and now I'm signed in. And I can switch the heater on and off. We can see that the commands are sent to the heater. In our real office heater, this button is connected to the relay, which is attached to the GPL pin number 13. Let me change the pin 13 to pin number 2, which is a built-in blue LED. And we should be able to see how clicking on this button on and off turns the blue LED on and off. Terminate the logs and type MOS get init.js. And let's edit this file. Okay, so this is... Uh, this is pin number 13. Let's change it to 2, which is a built-in blue LED, and copy it back to the device. 
MOS put init.js, MOS console, and let me reboot the device and wait until it's connected to AWS again. And we can turn this LED on or off using the front end. So in reality, this is how the relay is operated. If you like this video, click like. If you have any comments, please comment. Thanks and see you later.